Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how you can embed responsive YouTube videos. Okay, so um, someone has asked me the other day how you can put in some responsive YouTube videos, and it's pretty easy to do, and it's the same technique uh, that's been around for a couple of years. So whenever you go to YouTube they basically they give you some source code that you can embed so I can just head over to a YouTube video and I'll uh, let's see I'll pick this very simple one column layout video don't need to play it and I'll head over to their share area and then they give you a couple options one of them is embed and they give you this chunk of code which is an iframe or an inline frame copy so an inline frame allows you to show basically another website within um, within your website. So I'm going to copy their their code and I'm going to jump over to a page which I've already got started up and I'll show it to you here in just a second and I'll just stick their uh, inline frame code. And they got a couple little problems. They don't have the HTTP colon there in the front of the URL and they have a set width of well, in this example, 563.15, I'm going to delete that. I don't want to use their fixed sizing. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it just how it is. It's basically an iframe tag with a source attribute, and the source is the location to the YouTube video. In fact, I've got a little bit more than what I need, but that's okay. That, that should be all right. Uh, frame border zero, allow full screen, and then there's nothing actually in between the opening and closing iframe tag. So otherwise, my page is pretty plain my opening div. I'm going to move it a little bit. Um, I've mentioned in a couple videos, I'd like you to get in the habit of doing this, but every web page you make, the entire body should be enclosed within some parent container or a wrapper. Gives you control for making web page layouts, especially responsive web page layouts. So I do have a wrapper and I've got a headline one. Now for the CSS to start, in fact let's do this meta tag to start, I do have a viewport meta in there for content equals width device width, width equals device width. That's something you might start getting in the habit of doing all the time anyway. Um, it won't have any ill effects if you are not making a responsive web page and it's going to be something you'll want to do when you are making a responsive web page. For my internal styles I have a reset rule. I use a very scaled down, very simple reset rule. but you might want to get in this habit also. Every CSS file you create, use a reset rule. And if you look this up on the web, you'll find plenty that are even more detailed than this one. So my outer wrapper, my, my div wrapper, I've set to a width of 100%, okay? Which means I'm going to have a flexible web page. Very, it's going to always scale, whether it's, it's a small iPod or whether it's a large widescreen monitor. Then I've got just a few aesthetic things, uh, fonts, bodies, and my headline and things like that. So now with my inline frame, what I'm going to do is I want to wrap it in a container. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a new div, but I'm going to need this in order to accommodate the changing size of my actual inline frame. And the inline frame, you should consider the video. So now I've got this video container, so now I've got to set up a couple basic rules for this. And they are pretty easy. I'm going to start with my um, video container space iframe. Okay, so this is my actual video or inline frame inside of my new video container. And I'm going to set the width to 100% and the height to 100%. If you recall, YouTube put in some specific width and height. I don't want that. I want to put my own in and it's going to expand and contract. I am going to set the max width to 100%. I do the same thing for images in a responsive page. This ensures that our inline frame will never be wider than the device. Max width of 100%. And I'm also going to do this. Uh, position absolute top 0 pixels left zero pixels. This is going to make more sense in just a second, but I'm going to be positioning this inline frame absolutely within its container. And of course its container is my video container, which is simply a div in this example. So div class video container. Now the, the declarations for this video container also max width of 100%, border five pixels. Actually, I'm just going to put this in temporarily. We'll, we'll take this out soon enough. I just like throwing borders in uh, in the short term so we can see stuff. Now check this out. Check this out here. Height zero pixels. 
So my video container is going to be zero pixels tall, but that's not going to help it out too much. So what I'm going to do is put some big padding bottom on there. And I'm going to start off with something that's not quite big enough. I'm going to go with 40%. And then I'm going to do position relative. Mentioned in positioning videos, whenever you want to position something absolutely, I highly recommend that you put it in a relatively positioned container. And that's what we have here. So basically my movie, my video, is going to be positioned inside of this video container. I'm going to save this and I'm going to go ahead and launch this in Firefox. And here is my video and I haven't sized it appropriately. You'll notice that I'm I'm not it is actually it is actually responsive, but I'm not getting the full height of my video. So I'm going to keep playing around with this padding bottom number. And this is this is going to impact the visible height of my video. So ah, now I'm getting a little bit more. It's actually still cutting off a little bit the bottom, but it's not too bad. When you play the video, it's easier to tell hey, this because I can see these black margins over here on the left and the right. I know that my video box is not tall enough, and I can make it taller by adding more padding to one of the either the top or the bottom would work here. I'm adding it to the bottom now. If I refresh this and play. We'll see that I'm no longer getting, I'm no longer getting that those black bars on the side. So now I have a pretty good size for the padding, and it looks like I got myself a nice responsive video player.